Welcome to the Cherry Picker, the horror movie podcast for we like to kill people. <laughs> <laughs> was I too emphatic? Was this too? I much? wasn't even looking at the screen to see oh, you. Oh, but um, okay. Yeah, Zach Cherry right. is me, your host, and with me as always is. <laughs> Wait, are we still going? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm so damn sorry. Eddie of Edward is Truth. <laughs> I feel a little offended by that. <laughs> Does, is that it what... It just stands out to me because I yeah. don't say sorry. sorry. I say, like, sorry. 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 S-A-W-R-Y. Sorry. Yeah. Well, the... you, it sounds... I think... Do Canadians say it like the same way they say worry, worry and sorry? Is that what it is? Or I don't think what do you that think it's a, when it's you a say conscious it? thing. When we speak, huh. we yeah. just assume that we sound like <laughs> Americans. <laughs> and it, and it wow. comes out no. not. No. You know? No. <laughs> but that's it, yeah, exactly. Like, pe- like people don't hear their own accents. Um, so, of course so, not. Yeah, if you're like English or Australian, you don't you don't hear that. It all it all sounds normal to you. I was uh, backpacking through through India um, years and years mm. ago, and someone like immediately was just like, "Oh, you're from Canada," and I'm just like, I was almost like not like offended, but I was just like taken aback because it's like, how did you? Like read me like that, you know? And they're just like, "Well, your accent." And they're just like, <laughs> oh yeah, I guess I do have an accent. Um, yeah, you must have said a boat or something. Something, something. Yeah, about something. that. But um, <laughs> my bloody Valentine is what we're uh, yeah we're discussing today. Uh, released February thirteenth, nineteen eighty one. This is the original, Ooh. not the uh, yes, not the the three dimensional one. Um, <laughs> oh God, is that what we're doing next year? I don't know. We don't because there's so few. There's so few Valentine horror movies. I'm just thinking that might be the only option we have next year. You never know. And I'm not. You never know. You never know. Yeah. There, Maybe I'm they'll sure make a new one. There's a lot of. I mean, not necessarily Valentine uh, themed movies, but like movies about but like, love. Doomed did love I just, stories. Did I just yeah. do the aboot? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even I don't even really listen to it. Okay, anymore. but okay, like, for I anyone mean, who's not all... understanding this banter that we have right now, this <laughs> this is a Canadian made movie. This and, and yes, it's, uh, very much so. Canadian cast primarily, I believe, and the I, I guess the lead character, if we want to call him that, I couldn't even really tell who who the lead was in this, but I, I want to say the character was was it J T T J T J. I, I thought she yeah. called him Jesse at one point. I, I like twice. I could have yeah. sworn people called him Jesse, and I couldn't tell if they were. But that, so is the is the Jesse his middle name? But they call him by his middle name. But he's also teach. I, it, it was so incredibly. That, he's a very because, complicated man. <laughs> as he we is. like find out in the movie. But um, yeah, he's got not. a very he's got a very <laughs> Canadian uh, inflection okay. to everything that he says, and it only gets it's, more Canadian as it goes along. That, well, because that, that was another question of mine, because, I mean, he's the, well, he's the one who I quoted with, I'm sorry, I'm so damn sorry, but that's not even one of, like, the examples of, like, it kind of an, at its most full flux. Like, I, I tried to write down some of his lines phonetically, because um, it's like he's got a clenched jaw with everything that he says, so yeah. it's like, look, I'm sorry I didn't mean for it to happen. Like, not happen, H-A-P-P-E-N. Hippin, H E P P I N, like hippin. Yeah. It's like weird, and it made me think like the only the, the person I kept hearing in my head it was for like an isolated two lines, but for some reason Skeet Ulrich isn't Canadian, is he? Oh no, no. Okay, I didn't think so. He's no. got, but he's got something that happens to his voice in Scream in two moments where it's just like, uh, look, Sheriff, I didn't kill anybody. Where it just, you know, just tight, <laughs> tight, tight, like, jaw. What? Do and you remember also, what Skeet um, Ulrich's real name was? We talked about no. it. No. Um, oh, I don't remember. I'm going to look we it up. It was it, very, I... it was very, like, farmer. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't um, remember. But, but um, no, 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 well, well the, this, the actor who plays TJ, like, the, very yeah. Eastern Canadian, like, like 
Newfoundland, Nova Scotia. Do a look. Some, I wrote yeah. do a look looking juking. Like it's it's <laughs> all, it's weird. It's 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 because I would never. If I heard him anywhere else, I would think like, are you some kind of Eastern European or something yeah. like that? Because it doesn't even read as Canadian to me, except in certain instances. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Brian uh, with a Y. Brian Ray Trout uh, is the actual birth name of Skeet Ulrich. <laughs> Billy Loomis from Spain. Brian Ray Trout. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah, that would have been a very different career for him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I could see him. <laughs> I just imagine Skeet Ulrich, like in Evil Dead Two, going Bob and Joe or something like that. You know, <laughs> Bobby Joe. Totally. Anyway, uh, <laughs> but um, do you have yeah. A, so do you have a premise? Because you... the other, oh, yeah, yeah, I do. But um, the other line, just just to close it up, like the other line with Skeet Ulrich is that sounds weird and adjacent to this guy, TJ, yeah. is when Sydney asks him, who did he call when he was in the, the precinct or whatever? Right. And he's just like, I called my dad. And she's like, no, you didn't. The sheriff called your dad. And he says, yeah, well, when I called, I didn't get an answer. Like, you know, it's like really, t again, just like clenched. When I called, I didn't get an answer. Anyway. Maybe he was like mumbling a little. Usually I'm the one that always brings up Scream. Uh, so I'm actually... I'm, I'm a little touched that, that you did. <laughs> it occurred to me, so yeah. of course I'm going to bring it up. All right. My bloody Valentine. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, do you want me to... <laughs> what, what? Shall I do this in the traditional spooky voice, or should I do this in, like, a really, really bad, like, Canadian... I, I, I kind of want to hear... I, wanna I, I want to hear... Oh, God. Yeah. No, because it's really bad. It's going to be really bad. I don't want to offend, like... Canadi Canadians listen to us. I don't want to offend anybody. I don't think any Canadians okay. listen to us. If you're Canadian, <laughs> go on the, the YouTube uh, link for this video and, uh, and and just comment and, and tell us if you're offended. Yes, just declare yourself. I am yeah. Spartacus. All right. I'm going <laughs> to... But I'm not doing... I'm not... I'm not like... This is not... I'm not claiming this is a Canadian. This is just kind of like what I hear... In the movie, so yeah, we get oh, we oh, get it. God, I'm speaking on behalf right, of Canadians. Sense. We we understand. All right, okay. <laughs> we, we know we know about the joke. <laughs> okay, oh God. After a mysterious person cloaked in mining gear pushes his female lover onto a pickaxe inside a mine shaft. The fun-loving townspeople of Valentine Bluffs are left to decipher whether the murder could have been committed by an unfortunate soul who, after <laughs> being... <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it! Oh, should I continue? Yes. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> an unfortunate soul who... After, I'm going, like, moving into, like, uh, Baltimore. But anyway, okay. <laughs> After being trapped in the mining tunnel from a preventable explosion, resorted to cannibalism for survival and went mad, killing those he deemed responsible for his ordeal. New. No. <laughs> I'm getting, like, Mike Myers at this point. Who is I'm, Canadian? I... <laughs> but... But you did, it was almost like Minnesota uh, a little Yeah, earlier. yeah, like, I'm kind of all like over Fargo. the place. I'm, like, yeah. I'm going into, exactly, I'm moving into Fargo. I'm also a little Romy of Romy and Michelle's high school reunion. <laughs> oh, I thought so. But <laughs> that's why it's not, It's I never claimed it was an accurate portrayal, folks. Here we go. Anyway, it's just the ear, the untrained, ignorant uh, United States of American ear. Okay. Mm. <laughs> We we don't even think we have an accent. We think everybody else has accents, but we don't think we do because we're ignorant that way. There, okay. Amends now you've made. offended everyone in the States. Yeah, good. Okay, everybody's equally offended, so we can come together and hate me. Now, <laughs> puzzling candy boxes start to appear bearing crimson, wet human hearts of new victims. But who will next bear the moniker of my bloody Valentine. <laughs> I lost it completely. <laughs> Did you say wet human hearts? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. 
great. <laughs> Crimson wet human hearts. If yeah. <laughs> make it a hashtag, folks. <laughs> wet human hearts. Yes. What? <laughs> what's your What's your my bloody Valentine experience? Um, I hadn't seen it until uh, two years ago, almost. You know, to the to oh, the wow. week. Yeah, uh, because you and I were doing Fright Club. Right. And we were, and I remember uh, we were going to do a comparison between this and Valentine. We did do it. And yeah, yeah um, which I rewatched prior to this recording, actually. And I, I, I do want to say, uh, you're, 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 you, you've, you've moved into your ease <laughs> on camera. If you watch your videos now against like when we did Fright Club two years ago, your voice is even higher. You're like, hi, everybody. Hi. I'm Zach Cherry. <laughs> Welcome to Fright Club. <laughs> Whereas I feel you're much more conversational now. And I, it, sounds, it sounds more like you're just like talking to me. But back yeah. then it was like, wow. Wow. Well, Zach I mean, is you, this is also punching. this is a different format. This is our podcast. But um, I think. No, but even on your videos, with, even on your videos, even on your videos. You're, you're more, fair enough. I mean, like, I, yeah. I think I got to a point personally where i was just like this is exhausting i would like do a take and i would like break out into a sweat and be like this is mm. this is not healthy it's just like too much yeah. like clenched energy and like trying to <laughs> trying to come up with that but that like well like because that was actually um inspired by we well, did it in the friday the 13th part two episode though welcome yes. to god's country um, but it stayed I, there. Imagine sustaining that for like 14 or 15 minutes. Oh, God, yeah. Um, I don't watch. Yeah, go back and watch it. I don't watch old YouTube <laughs> videos of, of mine. Okay. I mean, like very okay. rare. Like if I have to check something, which I have had to do recently. But um, yeah, it's <laughs> it's not fun. Um, I don't even listen back. Like to our actual episodes, like the cherry picker, I don't. Yeah. Like I might listen the week of like that we recorded it just to be like, oh, I wonder what we talked about. But lately I've been so um, just like because I, I was just like, well, I was just had the conversation. I don't need to to relive it. Um, and just like busy with other stuff that I haven't actually listened to it. But I know that you sure, listen to sure. it a lot. I don't know if you still do. I, I used to a lot more when I would like yeah. post, you know, my own like little clippage and everything like that. I have kind of dropped the ball in recent months. Um, but you know, I, I mean, I'll, I'll still dip in just to kind of make sure. Okay, how does that look? How is that sounding? Okay, cool. It's we're good. It's weird to like move on with my watch life. and listen to yourself. There's there's something very yeah, uh, like egocentric about I, it. <laughs> I mean, I prefer if there's more time and space between it because then I've completely forgotten <clears throat> what I've said or what you've said. I'm just kind of like, yeah. oh, or I'll remember stuff and be like, oh, that stayed with me. That's really cool. I learned yeah. that here, you know. But um, anyway, um, but I well, went back and I watched and um. Well, yeah. I was just gonna say it's interesting you brought up the the, the Fright Club uh, thing because yeah. obviously, like, I, I did want to talk about Valentine because I feel like yeah. more than ever now, you know, I think back when we did that, it was sort of at least like the conversations and the or conversations that you and I had were like we don't really know which one's better. Like, we feel that yeah. they're both really good. Like, there's equal footing that they're both strong in certain areas above an, another. But I think at this point. Yeah there is a clear favorite for me that me too. I, and Isn't it's not, weird? and it's not this one. I know <laughs> I had the exact same experience and um, the voters, uh, cause we, we always put it to a public poll for people yeah. to vote which one they preferred and spoiler alert for that episode of Fright Club. You can still check it out. <laughs> There's like um, six all for, together. <laughs> yeah. But just, just start, that was a lot too. Yeah. That took a lot of sweat. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I'm glad that we Dear stopped God, doing Dear God, it was that. grueling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and like this nobody so was watching easier. them. Nobody was watching them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, a few thousand people, like it's got, it's, I think it, it's got a few thousand, like, I mean, more than it did at the time, but we yeah. really needed those numbers then. That's why we don't do it anymore. But um, yeah. anyway, uh, but people voted, I think, almost 70%, 75% or so mm. voted in favor of My Bloody Valentine as, like, the, the, the better film. And that's actually something that I'd like to talk about also. But I, I will say, just to address what you just shared, I agree in turn. I, I think at the time... Because I don't think I had much history with Valentine prior to that either. Mm -hmm. So watching them both, I was kind of like, oh, I don't know. They're both kind of like different flavors, but they both pose a lot of the same kind of 
uh, not even plot points, but maybe just devices and stuff like that. That's interesting that they plug in the Valentine as a kind of dark, you know, foreboding uh, 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 device, for lack of a better... I'll just use the same word I just used. But anyway, um, but I have more fun with Valentine now. This one, re-watching it, uh, maybe I'm just not in the mood because it. Do, I, I do a lot of basic things. I have a lot of basic favoritism in my <laughs> in my dna these days yeah. but um I, I i watching things uh at the appropriate time of year or whatever i i prefer to watch them just when i feel it and i i wasn't really kind of going you know i should watch my bloody mouth so yeah. but i did and I, I i liked it but it was it, it wasn't as enjoyable as it was the first time um like, I remember watching it the first time thinking, this is very kind of basic. It's not really pushing the parameters of horror in any sense. Um, in fact, it's really kind of like following suit with Friday the 13th and a lot of the other holiday horror movies yeah. of the time where they're all copying Halloween and all trying to, or even Black Christmas, arguably, and trying to just kind of like, let's take a, a holiday and make it dark, you know, kind yeah. of thing. I think um, you're, you're, yeah. you're right about about the like the Friday the 13th thing because this came out in 1981 mm -hmm. so it's just right off yeah. of the heels of the first movie and like we know for a fact because we, we we've talked about this before is that you know once that first Friday the 13th movie came out because that was really the the first movie that or, you know, Sean Cunningham uh, was like the first person that's just like, well, we can make our own version of Halloween and, you know, do right. it here. And then that's when we saw all of these other movies just basically take the Friday the 13th formula and do it to yeah. varying success rates. <clears throat> um, yeah. I think that this one is actually like this would be a good Friday the 13th movie if this was a, a Friday the 13th sequel. Um, yeah. but it, there's definitely, <laughs> no, no, I, I, I do think so. Um, but there's, uh, there's certainly facets about it that, that does feel very much like, oh, there's like the crazy Ralph character there. I even, there's a line that, uh, I guess he's the mayor, May mayor, uh, Hanager. Um, uh -huh, or does uh -huh. he just own the, the mine? I'm not sure. But th when they're in the car and he's opening up the, the heart box and he's like, Oh, not again. And it's just like a very Betsy Palmer <laughs> yeah. reaction. It's just like, I told them to stop. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, no, he's great. I uh, that, That's another thing. I, I It's not like I don't like this movie. It is Mayor Hanager. I just looked it up. Played yeah. by Larry Reynolds. Um, it, actually, the thing that endears me most to it is the locale that they use. And, you know, the kind of... Uh, 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 f cultural flavor that is in the air and everything yeah. of it. Uh, in addition to the time period, like this was released the same year as Friday the 13th Part 2 and Halloween 2 and the aesthetic is largely there with the feathered hair and the kind of like that, you know, that midpoint transition between like, you know, 70s moving into the 80s um, a lot of lot of earth tones, a lot of brown, very, you know, like uh, and even just like, I can really appreciate the homemade feel of it because it it doesn't feel like a big budget thing but that yeah. lends a certain level of authenticity even when the acting can be you know uh, i don't know if it's larger than life but maybe just a little uh posturish if that makes sense yeah. you know like you know like i'm playing a role and this is the thing i'm doing it's, i'm not sitting there like biting my nails going oh my gosh how are they gonna you know i'm just kind of like oh this is a fun movie yeah <laughs> based <laughs> off of the performances but i mean but the the like you know the the canadian flavor of it all yeah uh i think is, is it, probably it, the most and is it canadian uh masquerading as american I, I i wasn't checking to see if there was any american flags but i was just thinking of black christmas <laughs> with uh the flags in the, the police station i didn't see anything of that nature i think they they I think they knew they couldn't really get away with that based on the aesthetic of the environment, like the town. You look at that. It's the same thing. We had this discussion with Black Christmas. Yeah. You know, you look at it and you're just like, yeah, that's not <laughs> that's not <laughs> fooling anybody. That's that's not the United States. That's, yeah. you know, like a nice flag. But, you know, you're not fooling anybody with this one. Um, and I'm glad they didn't. because I mean, again, you can't because like if they did, they wouldn't have cast TJ with that actor. Uh, whose name I don't know. I'm looking at it real real quick right now. Uh, usually I write all this stuff down. Paul Kelman, 
is the name of the actor. He doesn't even have a photo on his IMDb, so I'm sure his page isn't active anymore. He probably didn't pursue much uh, in recent years. Oh, is he still around? I don't even know. Oh my gosh, he died. <gasps> oh my God. Recent? He died January 31st, 2022. So almost, so almost a full year ago. Oh, wow. uh, he was 72 years old. Oh, R.I.P. Paul Kelman, you are yeah. un you are unforgettable. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll I will spend the rest of my life perfecting my impression of him, and maybe one day <laughs> I'll nail it. But <laughs> but yeah, um, it was it was a fun ride. But like I, you know, as we got down to the climax and everything like that, it started to feel anticlimactic to me this yeah. particular screening how about you yeah well i mean just to, to, to speak to my first experience because i don't really remember yeah. i think that this was because i had the movie on on dvd and i've since upgraded to the the uh, screen factory uh release yeah. of it but that was probably around the time of like before the remake came out and yeah. So I'd say like two, 2008, 2009, just like in, in preparation mm. for that. Um, sure. So, I, you know, I, I, I saw it once. And I don't think I ever revisited it until we did uh, that, uh, the, the, that Valentine's versus My Bloody Valentine, which was like 2020, uh, yeah. 2021, I, I believe, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, because yeah. it was like the, the, yeah. the 20th and 40th anniversaries. Um and I think that the, the difference is because I, there, you can look at My Bloody Valentine and you can look at Valentine as both being kind of a riff on or just like riding the wave of success of a different movie. So in My Bloody Valentine's case, it was Friday the 13th. With Valentine, it was Scream. And mm -hmm. I think just maybe that's just my current flavor since, you know, everything... I do and talk about is so steeped yeah. in scream that you know anything mm -hmm. that is closely resembling that is going to be the clear favorite to me but you know I look at Valentine and it's just like you've got a murder mystery and not that there is sort of a mystery here but I feel like it's not handled in the same way as like a like a scream type murder mystery that that we see in Valentine mm -hmm. uh there's definitely the <clears throat> the Kevin Williamson flavor, even though he had nothing to do with Valentine, but, you know, just like the hip young cast of, you know, all these, like the, the beautiful yeah. CW faces, Denise Richards, Marley Shelton, yeah. uh, David yeah. Boreanaz, all that, um, yeah. that I don't know. Cause like, even like the kills, I think are both really good in both movies. Um, mm -hmm. And unfortunately for both movies, they were, cut down for yeah, yeah. various reasons uh, i i know there's like a whole thing about like my bloody valentine there's all this footage that d is missing like that you can't even have mm -hmm. the uh yeah. the movie in its entirety like the the screen factory yeah. edition is like the closest we get to having everything restored um, and there's some like great stuff in there. There's the the shower head yes. uh, yeah, kill, yeah. Um, and in and in my bloody Valentine, I think what's so great about the kills, or sorry, in Valentine, what's so great about the kills in that movie is that there's such a uh, like diverse range of weapons that are used, <laughs> just like the arsenal, <laughs> and and even like the 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 deaths themselves, because there's the one uh, the one girl on like the shard of like the the broken shower and remember it like forms the right, pool right, right. of like the the heart-shaped uh pool yes. of blood and <laughs> everything like that so it's it's real that's why you know it might be hard to to decide uh which one is you know your favorite valentine movie but i think it just you know probably comes down to the fact that i am you know i was born in 85 so like the 90s and mm -hmm. like the early 2000s like that was my time when I was just like consuming horror f for the first time for, for like for the most part uh while still mm -hmm. revisiting the old classics but I always had like probably a stronger connection to those movies so I just feel a greater affinity towards Valentine if that makes sense plus we sure, also talked sure. in that episode uh, that was like episode two by the way uh, the cherry picker, one year old, uh, as of February first. Hey! We didn't even mention that, but 
Um, <laughs> the yeah, because um, we talked about the kind of like the trashy um, Melrose Place vibe of of Valentine, yep. Yep. which I love. Mm-hmm. Love that show. I know and love Scream, <laughs> and it's kind of like a like a coming together of both of those a r- set around yeah. the, the the day of Valentine's. So mm-hmm. maybe that's why that's I, a sweet spot for you. Yeah, that's yeah. why I glom to. Uh, <laughs> To Valentine rather than my bloody Valentine or MBV, <laughs> as I say. I mean, there are some things that I can really appreciate beyond just the aesthetic and the Canadian of it all. Like, I mean, I did, I did finally because I think uh, I only got exposure to um, the theatrical cut of my bloody Valentine <laughs> the whole time we were uh, working on Fright Club. So I, I purchased the Blu-ray this time, watched. The uncut scenes, because I think before you just sent me the the, the cut scenes like uh, in a YouTube clip or something like that, Maybe. and I was like, oh, that's gruesome. I w- it would be lovely to see them plugged back into the movie, and I got to watch that, so that was fun for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, but. Uh, there were other things that I had forgotten about, like, and I, maybe they're not in the theatrical cut, but the fact that the director credit, like, while well, that little opener scene is happening, the, 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 the love scene, as yeah. it were, uh, where the man is in full mask and all gear, you know, just completely covered, and the woman is there in her bra playing with his hose <laughs> of his. There's definitely you know, some mask. like fetish stuff. Uh... <laughs> going on there (laughs) and the fact that it's over the director credit i love that he's owning it in that particular moment just like this is the movie i'm presenting to you like i appreciated that Mm -hmm. and um another thing though that i didn't remember i i I wonder if i watched it with uh subtitles the first time i went through because this time i did not because sometimes subtitles can be a little distracting and you want to just enjoy the film uh this time there was a lot of dialogue that escaped me i couldn't tell what the hell they were saying but it was so much fun hearing those kind of (laughs) like that these were obviously a lot of them didn't seem to be maybe that professional (laughs) at acting they weren't used to oh there's road noise i should probably speak over the road you know the ride and i was like okay and it felt like there's a lot of scenes of just like guys being guys you know there's just there's no real context to anything it was just like they're just palling around hanging the locker room talk Going to the yeah. bar, they're hanging out in like a junkyard after just drinking more. That was like the after party. Yeah, but I mean, so, oh, I, yeah, exactly. But just like even in the beginning, but the simple life, you know, just <laughs> just hanging out with well, your, that, your best friends. <laughs> well, that's one of the things that I did appreciate about not understanding them, but still kind of like getting the gist. It was like opera, where you can like you don't have to understand the language, but you'll kind of get the emotional catharsis that you're supposed to because the music is powerful enough. It yeah. seemed like. The film was made uh, 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 decently enough um, that I can just watch a bunch of guys going, and I'm like, oh, okay, this is camaraderie. This yeah. is about like a small town feel. This is about like, you know, they're, they're not a care in the world, the banjo, you know, accompaniment. <laughs> I wonder if like the script notes, like there wasn't any dialogue and it just said like male camaraderie. And they're just like, <laughs> improvise. <laughs> Hijinks and good times. <laughs> and then, I mean, I had forgotten that the town was called Valentine Bluffs, the little town with a big heart. And I was yeah. just kind of like, oh, see, this is setting me up. And then I get to like the Valentine decorations. Like before you mentioned like how Valentine was very Melrose Place and Scream and very sleek and yeah. stylized and everything like that. This one... The, the the decorations that the, that are em, em, employed here <laughs> are the decorations I grew up with because I was a child of the 80s. So not only did I grow up with movies that looked like this, but I grew up with, you know, that kind of classroom streamer, Cupid, you know, paper Cupid, cardboard, red heart, you know, like yeah. hanging from the, I mean, all of that like thrift store majesty yeah. <laughs> that I no, enjoy totally. so much that I've kind of gotten away from because now as an adult I look at stuff like that and I'm like number one it looks like work and number two it looks like a lot of work for mm-hmm. kind of like a tacky result so well, that's why I don't they decorate got, in my um, own home Mabel for Valentine's Day she was you know? like <laughs> super excited to oh <laughs> and Mabel, she was another one. I was just kind of like, I remember liking her. I, I do have to say, you mentioned the kills earlier. Yeah. I adore her kill in the uncut version because it's 
it's gruesome not just because like it's graphic or whatever but because i really liked her she's kind of like my <laughs> she's my sally of Fr- oh, no. <laughs> friday the 13th of this movie because she's so sweet yeah she's so freaking sweet she seems like a woman you can't I, go back out know, of that brain exactly <laughs> <laughs> New Englander now. I love <laughs> You can't go back out there in that way, but, <laughs> but I love I just... like the the uh just like the reading of the cards because they like the, the rhymes were oh, so stupid. It's just it's like roses are yes, red, violets are blue. Um one is dead. dead. No, one has one has died, and so will something you. Like something like one is like dead, that. and so are you. And it's just like I just be yeah, like, like, who that. the who the fuck wrote that? That's stupid. Um, <laughs> but no, you're just like terrified. Um, yeah. But no, I just I loved how <laughs> into it she was because it was just like clearly this is a town oh. called Valentine Bluff. The signage mm-hmm. going into it is like clearly like they're a Valentine's Day town. I don't yes. know how that's possible. Like yeah. a town can be themed around one day out of the year, but that's what they are. And there's even there was a part of the movie where they're like, "We're not celebrating. We're not having the dance anymore," which is just yeah. which is which is funny because they're like, "Take everything down," but they're still like on the main street. It's almost like the Fourth of July, but like <laughs> Valentine's. <laughs> <laughs> they all this shit screamed up there. But even then, I think like they haven't celebrated in twenty years yet. The town's called Valentine Bluff. And there's like the sign with the, with the huge heart. I was just thinking like maybe, I mean, not that they needed to do this, but I just thought of like Jason uh, lives, you know, when they're just like, <laughs> we changed Crystal Lake to forest green because we wanted everyone to yeah. forget, you know, yeah. maybe that could have been like Harry Warden is that he was actually Freddy Krueger and like all the, the, <laughs> the parents needed to erase the memory of him. And he so they back. changed the name from Valentine's Bluff to like, I don't know, Knob Hill, whatever. I don't <laughs> <laughs> Small Ro- town in Canada, planes. USA. S- small town Canada. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just any town. Any town yeah. Canada. But um but no, but the thing about uh Maple's kill that I appreciated the most is the aftermath, the discovery of it when uh, Chief Newby finds her tumbling in the dryer yeah. and just like because how it, like bad, bad it smells <laughs> just like his... i know that's another yeah. thing like i because i kept wondering so is it the the burning of human flesh that they're smelling or i know hair when it burns yeah. has a very distinct and not you know uh yeah. attractive smell so an odor if you will so i was i was just wondering like what were they smelling and what did it smell like oh. that's one thing that didn't work as well for me because i just my old factory sense wasn't speculating hard enough. Maybe the uh, miner the should have uh, used a dryer sheet. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I love I how like there's up. clearly like the blood on the window of the dryer, and he's yes. looking at everything except for that. And it wasn't <laughs> he didn't actually open the door; it just popped open by itself, and she fell out well. and still like tumbling around. <laughs> Because well, that's, that's, together... that's how that's how that's how dryers work. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's how they work. <laughs> you open them up and they just tumble a few more times, especially if there's a dead body in them. But yeah. I, I think I just attribute that to the innocence of the film. That is one another thing that I uh, really admire about it is there is um, a, a concerted effort to make. You know, the horror film, the horror yeah. film and everything here. I didn't feel like anybody was like doing anything tongue in cheek or like anything was motivated by, you know, uh, greed or, or any kind of studio choices or anything. I was just kind of like, let's make a movie. It's a very modest. And let's have a killer in it. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a moder- <laughs> modest effort. Um, there's a lot of heart. In this, um, yeah. no pun intended, but um, it's <laughs> <laughs> and on like I didn't even go through trivia about this movie beforehand. Like I, I, I researched yeah. it in the past, but you know I, I retained none yeah. of that. But just like just mm-hmm. I'll go through some of the the things here because like the first thing is like when they were scouting locations because uh, they found the the mine uh, in. Uh, Nova Scotia and they chose it because of the rustic appearance of it because they wanted to have that mm. like old worn down mine yeah. and when the yeah. town found out that they were going to be filming there they went ahead the town and fixed up the mine you know just Aww. repaired things repainted to the point where they came in to film and they're just like that's 
the complete opposite of what we wanted. So then they had to spend $75,000 of the film's budget to mess shit up again. They and to dress the set. And I, I think if there's, a, if there's a moral to that story, it's just like communication is key. Yes, is key. <laughs> I, I agree. Yeah. But actually, again, that's just like so moving to me, though, because again, like, you know, not to drive the point too hard, but the heart that's at play there with this town just kind of like, oh, there's going to be shooting a movie here. Let's make everything nice for them. Mm-hmm. You know, like there's something about that motive. Or they were I just embarrassed about how deal. shitty it looked. And they're just like, no maybe town of Oz is going to look wanna... like crap on, on the pictures. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we, like everything's we, we got a sparkle. About... But when we were talking about um, freaking Barbarian, about, like, all the shit that, you know, like, Detroit must be eating uh, after being, like, depicted as a, a, a kind of like a den of iniquity and everything like that in a yeah. rundown, dilapidated neighborhood, you know, cornucopia, you know, whatever. Mm. Um, I can understand why, if you're part of a, you know, small town in Nova Scotia, you'd probably want to keep up appearances and everything yeah. like that. But, um I did feel like the Harry Warden legend, uh, I love the way it's kind of spelled out for us, but the thing is, the way it's spelled out for us uh, it, it, by uh, the mayor and everything, the way we uncover it as an audience, it felt kind of like if Friday the 13th was sloppier. It, re- it made me actually kind of uh, appreciate the, the, the deft storytelling <laughs> of yeah. the original Friday the 13th, just because... We don't know too much going in. Everything about the, our path to Camp Crystal Lake in that movie is kind of alluded to. Like, you hear about that bad business up there yeah. and, you know, stuff like that. You know, we just kind of p- bits and pieces here and then. And then finally at the end, Betsy Palmer serves us a meal of exposition. <laughs> mm, you know, so it, delicious. It, exactly. Actually, I do agree Chef, with you. Um, <laughs> I, I much prefer even like the original Friday the 13th to this um yeah. because it is because the, they just they really honed in and simplified a formula whereas i feel like here even yeah. though there are so many things that they do get right here like i think that the the villain it's not like the the miner is such an iconic villain yeah. uh yeah like uh, among a sea of of 80s copycats that that was nothing like another movie that's similar to this in a way um, like prom night because there's even a twist there where I think there is a, yes. like a mental patient that they think is the, the person killing and then it turns out sure. to be uh, someone else uh, and all they're wearing is like Thank a ski you. mask and it's just like okay <laughs> like you know like the, a similar sort of twist <laughs> like that where it's just like they almost had to yeah, yeah, yeah. to work overtime to set up all this convoluted misdirection Whereas Friday the 13th, mm-hmm. it all felt very organic. It was just, we're just kind of like going with the flow. And there was like the, the mm-hmm. seeds that were planted earlier on of just like, oh, that that water that went bad. And, you know, like the, yeah. you know, all that <laughs> shit. Um, only for, yeah. for for Betsy Palmer to emerge. So I, I, I do definitely <laughs> appreciate that more. But but even with, with this movie, like it's there. I find that like for 1981, like the cinematography, and especially like considering mm. the the homemade uh, budget of it all, like the the movie looks really good. They filmed yeah. like all all that stuff like is practical locations, like filmed inside a mine. Um, yeah. I, there, I don't know if there was some studio sets that they had built, but for, for I'd be shocked part, if there were. Yeah. They look like real, just basic multi-purpose rooms and you know of course the streets don't look like back lots at all yeah um i i I appreciate that another thing oh um what i had completely forgotten about like this detail of the um the clothes Mm -hmm. that hang up above the showers or whatever Um, oh the uh the the, the minor suits (laughs) Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, j- just because, like, uh, I'm watching, is it Sylvia and John uh, in that? <laughs> I don't know anyone's name. Yeah. <laughs> I think her name's Sylvia. <laughs> yeah, she's yeah. Sylvia. And I, th- and I remember her going, John, John. Um, yeah. So anyway, Sylvia and John. And then he has to go off and get bear. And she uh, <laughs> stays 
behind and he's already shown her how the, the the thing works when the clothes drop on you and stuff like that um apparently like i listened to a little bit of the director's cut while i was setting this up for the pod and uh the director talked about how that was an actual fixture that was part of the mine and it served a purpose because the mines are actually quite warm so after uh the clothes get washed i guess they hang them uh, up above because heat rises and it just dried them naturally overnight so when they came in for their next shift the next day like the suits would be dry um so that I, I was just kind of like oh okay forgot about that but really forgot about um i mean i guess Sy sylvia's kill probably wasn't as intense in um the theatrical cut there was probably right. i'm sure there was some footage that was uh put back in there but one of the things that i really forgot is the terror in her face she the, i i actually I wasn't scared like, ooh, I'm scared horror movie, but I was scared for her, like as a movie goer, because I was just thinking, she's so small, mm -hmm. and she's really, really good, like she looks terrified, and then she's just got this big man lifting her and kind of throwing her around. By the head. It was really chilling. It was unsettling. Yeah. yeah. And then when he finally just kind of like did the the shower impaling and, and whatnot, like, but I mean, everything that led up to it. I, I, I was really impressed. I was like, okay, this is a good kill. This was staged really, really well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, the other thing that... <laughs> okay. Can we talk about the characters a little bit? Like, aside from, you know, the kind of, like, small town charm and everything. Yeah. How many people in this movie do you like, Zach Cherry? <laughs> like, characters, not the actors, but people. Well, like... that's the thing. Like, I don't remember anyone's name. Um, <laughs> like, I... <laughs> barely retained anything I, I like the uh i think i think it's is it like fuck hold on the guy with the mustache and i only oh, like hollis him. hollis with the glasses yeah and i only like him because that he is serving with that mustache like that's yes! some good groomed stash <laughs> there <laughs> <laughs> Hollis is great. Hollis yeah. is um, what, one of the most likable people in the town. He he rivals Mabel, uh, certainly, because, yeah. number one, he breaks up a fight between two idiots uh, who are mm -hmm. ruining a party for everybody. A party that admittedly shouldn't be happening. But yeah. come on, you guys, you're harshing everybody's buzz. Yeah. The girl is obviously not into either of you enough to commit to either of you 100%. So just leave her oh, alone. Oh, she's problematic too. Someone. Let's let's not. Oh, uh, dear God. Yeah. But um, <laughs> no, totally. And this is another thing because we had, were talking about like the characters in Valentine and how they're kind of, you know, very shallow and, and two dimensional. And like their whole thing yeah. in that movie was just like they're single women or they they you know have relationships that are you know on the fritz or whatever you know they're they're working through it seeing other people but it's just like yeah. every single one of them the most important thing in their life is the relationships or just like you know getting the d um yeah it's just like it's just like that's what <laughs> defines them it's just like you know and then there's this this murder mystery right it's almost like Forget the men. Let's just focus on, like, the Scooby-Doo of it all. Um, whereas right, here, yeah. like, the characters kind of suck for other reasons because they're just, like, everyone's in everyone's business. And everyone thinks that they're, like, <laughs> it, there's a lot of entitlement here. I mean, there, there is in Valentine yeah. as well, but it's just, like, the, 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 the men are definitely, you know, painted as um, troglodytes. And the women are yeah. so thinly written like they're even here like it's just sort of about the men um yeah. but there is like there's just sort of like what about me like what about my freedom but then <laughs> it's the, like the the main girl i think her name is sarah um yes she's basically she's so toxic because she's going back and forth between the two of them and there's the scene like at the bar i think it was earlier on where she's sitting with him and like in that moment, like all three of them suck as people. Cause like she gets up and he's like, where are you going? Uh, and I'm talking about um, Axel at this point. And she's just like, yes, I yes. just was going to go change like the music or, you know, go to the jukebox. And he's like, okay, hurry back or whatever. So right there, um, like just very controlling and domineering. She goes over and she's not at, like, she's first of all, she lied to him. She wasn't going over for the music. She was going over <laughs> so she can, and it wasn't even to have a conversation with TJ. It was more so to just be like, 
you know, this is your own fault. Like, it was just like she went to pick a yeah, fight with yeah. him. And he's kind of like, he sucks because he's like doing this like brooding thing where he's not like talking to anyone. But he's inviting it because he's like he's like staring across the room and like giving these looks like like, yeah, I'm pissed off, but I'm not actually going to say something. So he's like super passive aggressive. And for some reason, these three are just like playing this dance throughout the entire movie of just like, you know, it's like if if they were on Judge Judy, um, she would be like, (laughs) why? Like, why are you fighting over like any of these people? Like, you all suck, you know? (laughs) But don't pee on my leg and tell me it's raining. Exactly. Um, I mean, I did feel, I, I agree with what everything that you're saying. I did kind of feel, finally, it wasn't like I was relieved and now she's redeemed. But it was like, like when she finally just kind of uh, shouts out at both of them, just like lashes on, just like, listen, I don't even get, I don't even know what I want. Just leave me alone. And just tries to, you know, leave and everything like that after the fight. Yeah. I was like, you're finally calling the boys jerks. Like, that's cool. This party's lame. That one guy, Howard, is, like, talking about how he, it's the first time I'm snorting Coke, man. And then he actually has not even a Coke, but I guess a cola drink in, oh. his, in his hand. <laughs> and he's, like, snorting it through his nose. And people are going, oh, delightful. It's a great oh, God. Party, but um, I, w- I wouldn't last in this town. But <laughs> um, <laughs> Valentine Bluffs, Jesus Christ. No. Um, also, I, I mean, think that you would be the Mabel, like you would have your own little <laughs> <laughs> laundromat, <laughs> and you would, and every time there was Laund- like a party, you'd be like, "I'm d- I'm in I charge love- of decorations," <laughs> but then right. you'd be like, "I have I have no time for anyone's bullshit." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I love that it's called a laundrette. I wonder. I was wondering, yeah. is that like a Canadian thing, or was that no something, idea. or is that like a bygone era thing, like? Maybe. Maybe it used to be it's called... It's just too the small only other time to be a, like a laundromat. A laundromat. It's just full-fledged like a, laundromat. It's just like a section okay. of a laundromat. I also noticed there was like <laughs> Madame, Madame Mabel. You know, she was... Yes, there's, it's actually was, like yeah, a cover I would totally for a brothel. Do that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's just to zhuzh it up. She's, you know, she's kind of... She's, she's, she's um, the town madam. and... No, she's she's got a celebratory spirit, and she wants you know to invite you to Madame Mabel's laundry. Maybe that's why it's not called a laundra- laundromat because yeah. that sounds too you know everything's so blue collar about the town. So she wants yeah. to you know dress it up and boutique it, Bo- and you know she can't call it a laundry boutique because yeah. what the fuck would that mean? So, a, but a laundrette. Oh, my beautiful laundrette. But um, yeah, I like the idea of that. The only thing I wouldn't want about being Mabel is I die <laughs> and one person makes an argument that they should keep doing the party because I worked so hard on it. It's what I would have wanted. And then nobody mentions me I just again. see your ghost and being like, no, you all need to mourn. Like, <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> right? I or mean, avenge well, me. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Like, we've both discussed this before. Neither of us would survive a horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I would hope somebody asked me this uh recently about like which horror trope do I think I would be in a slasher movie and I had yeah. to think about it for a while. I really cuz I'm just like I don't feel like I know who I'd like to be, you know, yeah. everybody wants to be the final girl, but I said ultimately I think in most instances I'd probably be the best friend who believes the final girl yeah. and defends what she's saying and tries to motivate the rest of the group. Like, come on guys, let's, this could be real. And even if it isn't like we care about this person, let's try it. That's who I would be. I don't know if I'd survive or not. I have no, it depends. Yeah. And also it's, it's so much of it depends on the group that you're with. I'm very much a, uh, you know, that's true. Like, like one movie's <laughs> uh, final girl might be another movie's, you know, best friend. Or first kill. This or, movie's yeah. this, this movie's final girl dies in many other movies. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, <laughs> even like the the very end, because like we're we're jumping forward <sighs> here, because after the reveal has happened, and we know that the the minor is Axel, and her and TJ are kind of walking away while everyone else is uh, crowding around to, to see everything. And then I, like Axel calls out or something and she runs back and she's just like, he's still alive. And she does this hysterical, like, ah, as she's running back there. And it's just like, what the fuck is like, he tried to kill you for one. Did he? I'm pretty sure he tried to kill her, 
But um, yeah, yeah. Um, but another thing is just like, who cares? He's crazy. He's evil and crazy. Like, why are you? You, you know, you've been going back and forth between the two of them, and it, it's almost like her. Like the thing that she's the most attracted to is like whoever is like currently c- can prove that they're like the most inappropriate uh, partner. Yeah. For her. So it's just like yeah. now all of a sudden this TJ guy he's who's who's like the outsider throughout the whole movie it's just like now he's all of a sudden the hero and it's just like eh you know what I want to go back to the other guy and she's like literally like gra- <laughs> like holding onto his arm you know to to get it back yeah so right there you know what um because we talked ad nauseum about uh, horrible final couples and I don't think that these <laughs> yes. two are as bad as some of the others because I feel like with these two like they're kind of independently shitty like they're not shitty as a union like the same way that I think like um Rennie and whatever the guy's name Sean in in Jason Takes Manhattan yeah. or Jesse and Jade and Bride of Chucky or Ray sure. and Julie and I Know What You Did Last Summer like those like those couples are like they're like complicitly um douchebags whereas I feel like uh Sarah and TJ are just like they're both shitty on their own and they just happen to be the two people that survived um so they're definitely there's a there's a case to be made for them in like a top 10 worst (laughs) final couple (laughs) worst people who well because that's the thing you can't even say they end up together because they don't but i'm sure that they they did i'm sure that after all was said and done they fucking went and had kids and, and shit. I'm sure she's got a roster of guys who are like just waiting to like drive into town and turn her world upside down. Take you know, abduct he's her the from mayor's work. son, so he has clout <laughs> in Valentine Bluff. And I don't. She, but what if the governor's son drives to no town? No interest in in leaving that place. Like she had hitched her post or whatever you know to, to that town. Like she, she she was a lifer there. Like they're they're still there. <laughs> They had you think kids. they'll stay? You think they'll stay in Valentine Bluffs together? Ew. I think they would, yeah. Oh my god, that's so depressing. I mean, given everything that they've gone well, through. Well, what was this what was going on with him anyway? Because like there's sort of like they don't really go into it, but he had left the he town left. and he left yeah. her and he you yeah. know, he tried to make it work doing something else and, and it didn't work out for him and he failed and right. he was ashamed and then he came back. And he didn't, so. and, but not only did he not take her, it sounds like he didn't even let her know he was going and yeah. stuff. So she just kind of carved out what little life she could staying in Valentine Bluff. Why she couldn't go on her own yeah. is up for debate. <laughs> but, uh, like, why she needed him. But, I mean, then again, like, we're talking about somebody who can get manipulated out of her shift at work and into a car. Did saying, she no, even no, get no, manipulated no, no, no. or he, did he, he just kidnap her? Because I mean, oh, I've he worked. He kind of just marched her out. I've like, worked in grocery stores before. You can't yeah. just like they know if you're gone. <laughs> I've taken <laughs> right? many extended breaks before, and you hear your name like over the intercom, like "Get back to work." Um, well, the... <laughs> so they like definitely he he took yeah. her against her will because he was like forcing same... her into the car, and then and the thing like she she was like, "All right, here we go," you know. <laughs> <laughs> But see, that's not, that, that's begrudging. That's not necessarily against her will. Like she, I feel like, because I feel like she knew that they had to have this conversation down by, is it a lake that they're by? I don't even I think remember. it was a bluff, you know, it was, that was the Valentine. Oh, bluff. Valentine's yeah. bluff. Is that what a bluff is? Yeah, I, don't even know I think a bluff, a bluff is. is like a, it's like a hilly cliff. I want to, I don't even know if that's a thing. I'm going to look it up. Okay. Because <laughs> I thought there was water. Wasn't there water that they were standing Well, yeah, by that was also? the ocean. Oh, that was the ocean. Okay, yeah. I have no idea. I don't know where Nova Scotia is. So, <laughs> could have been one of the Great Lakes. I have no idea. It's, um, um, but... it's the Atlantic. It's, it's the East Coast. Okay, there you go. So, they're standing out there and everything like that. And she seemed determined... Not even determined to have this conversation with him, but she seemed like mm-hmm. she knew it was inevitable. And when she finally got the opportunity to share her truth with him and be like, but why? Why did you do that? And all this stuff and got all weepy and stuff because she really loves him and everything, I guess, um, at that particular moment because he's the worst possible choice for her. Um, I mean, I think uh, there's a case to be made for both of them, like the uh, Axel as well. Uh, yeah, yeah. But, uh, oh, no, I mean, but from moment to moment, like yeah. at any given moment, it, it could be either of them. And at that particular moment, because he was the one who was jeopardizing her job and who was, <laughs> you know, like um, 
like I, I won't say forcing because she she was saying no, but she was also going along. She didn't seem. I I, I feel like she was saying no, but she ultimately the, is it's a problematic situation because I feel like ultimately she wanted to have this conversation with him. She just didn't want him to think she wanted to have this conversation with yeah. him. Like uh, that's the thing. She can't even commit to. Okay, fine. Yeah. Let's hash this out. Let's do. Let's do this. It's just kind of like, no, I'm walking with you. I'm getting in the car. I'm letting you close the door, and I'm not yeah. attempting to get out. I'm just gonna go. No, you know. And so I'm just, ugh, whatever. And it's funny uh, how, <laughs> just in in comparison to the ladies of Valentine, how that makes them seem so independent and yeah. uh, just just in control of of. of of everything in in their lives because there's those are problematic characters in and of yes. themselves like we we talked about mm-hmm. them like the slut shaming that, that goes on between them yes. but you know if you put them in a room uh like of like the the female <laughs> characters of Valentine and my buddy Valentine oh, the gosh. ones in Valentine would whoop their asses you know yeah, they would be they would be um, calling the shots so absolutely well because this is the thing even when sarah manages to kind of like uh take hold of a situation and you know yeah. have a little bit of agency it's only because there's a woman in the in the space weaker than she is patty <laughs> who, who like the, by, no, but yeah, the entire patty. movie she was like kind of like the stronger one you know she was the the sassy yeah. best friend who was in control she but the fun. moment the moment that her man is taken out she just like yeah. crumbles into this uh, withering mess. Who who cannot even yeah. you know? She needs to be no. dragged through there to, <laughs> to save her. Life. She needs to be encouraged. There's one way out of that fucking coal mine, and all she has to do is just like climb. And I understand panicking. I understand you know she was under duress and everything like that. But my God, she full-on fell apart to the point where I was starting to think, you know, there were two sides to that ladder. Sarah's trapped underneath Patty. Sarah just cl- kind of flip over to the other side of the ladder yeah. and climb past Patty on the other side. And or, then when you pass her, get back. <laughs> let's just kill Patty already. You know, like just like expedite the inevitable and get the fuck out of here. And it made me um, sad because I enjoyed Patty up until till that, that point, sequence, that yeah. whole final sequence. I thought she was fun. And I also, but that's the thing. I enjoyed her and I also enjoyed um, Hollis, but I felt like there was a downside even with him because his downside reared its head in the third act because he's such an obliging people pleaser. Mm-hmm. Like he's standing there shaking his head going like, no, 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 we can't go out. Well, all right. And they're just like, come on, take us on a tour. Well, all right. Okay, guys, we're going to go off and be alone. Well, all right. You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> had he been a little stricter and a little bit, you know, more uh, uh, more of a uh, of yeah. a better friend, you know, like looking out for his friend's I mean, safety maybe and if everything this, like that rather than... Maybe if the script had more of a voice, like not even just like a, a female voice or a male voice, but just a voice. Um, yeah. Because it's, it, it, there, there doesn't seem to be a, a semblance of a authentic um, person that you know we we can follow yeah. along here. Um, so yeah, to just to <laughs> that whole uh, question of just like, do, do you like any of the characters uh, in this movie? And, you know, I'm sure that there, there's there's one. We'll you know we'll we'll get to the cherry on top later. But um, yeah, yeah, there's not there wasn't really anything like because even Friday the Thirteenth. Um, the, like most of those characters, I'm, mm-hmm. I, you know, I, I'm kind of develop a relationship with, and, you know, especially yeah. Adrian King by the end there that, you know, I'm rooting for her success and here mm-hmm. I'm just kind of like, okay, we're just kind of watching everything, uh, go through the motions of, of, you know, what, what we can expect. And it's just, it's never satisfying. On a character level, I'm glad- also um, yeah. uh, bluff. Uh, yeah. A bluff is a type of oh, okay. broad, rounded <laughs> cliff. Uh, most bluffs okay. border a river, beach, or other coastal area. There you yeah. go. So, <laughs> close enough. Yeah. And what did I say? A rounded cliff. Bluff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think you said yeah. exactly that. So there you go. See, I, I, I don't remember. Any of I was a geography, geography kid. Uh, <laughs> I I wasn't so yeah. there you go, <laughs> but um, I'm glad that you brought up Adrian King because now I'm realizing 
Um, Because I think during our Friday the 13th discussion, we discussed, you know, liking her a great deal, but also kind of accepting that, you know, as much as we love her and her legacy, um, she's still not our favorite of the franchise and she's not neither of ours. Like We've been talking about Adrienne King a lot lately. Like her name has come up in like every episode uh, for a while. Yeah. She's with us. She's, she's never the far moment. from us. Yeah, she she <laughs> she's a she's an icon. Well, apparently she's uh, <laughs> she's coming back to the uh, whatever the the Peacock yeah. TV series uh, Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. So intrigued by that, and now there's yeah. a movie as well. Like yeah. that's that's like the the Sean Cunningham the, like the pettiness again of just like, well, you're gonna make a show, I'm gonna make a movie. Um, <laughs> I saw someone on Twitter. This is such a niche uh, comparison. <laughs> Uh, but they're just like the the Friday the Thirteenth or like the Crystal Lake TV series and new Friday the Thirteenth movie is like the new Octopussy versus Never Say Never Again, which is oh, the James okay. Bond. <laughs> it was the it right. was when Sean Connery came back to play James Bond in the unofficial James Bond movie that came out the same yes. year as Octopussy, which with Ron okay. I don't know. I just thought that was a hilarious uh, comparison because it, yeah. it's so true. That's what the the new. Friday the Thirteenth, uh, this this Victor Miller Sean Cunningham uh, sure. rivalry has turned into. I could also make uh, a, a more uh, of the moment like reference, just in terms of like it's like the Child's Play reboot against the Chucky series, you know? Like oh, the remake. You pick yeah. A, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you you yeah. pick a column, yeah. but anyway. <laughs> well, I mean, that was that, I think and that's I, basically a dead project like they're they're not doing any more thank god remake. thank god thank god but um well unless it became megan <sighs> no let's not <laughs> let's not link them i enjoyed megan enough that i never <laughs> i felt like i think i already said it like megan got everything right that i feel like the child's play reboot was yeah. attempting and got wrong but anyway um uh, i was gonna say something oh adrian king i'm glad you brought her up though because you're making me realize like a year before a film was released with a final girl who even though she's neither of our favorites still and, and was not like kind of like you know uh a through and through kind of like strong willed like oh she's certainly going to be we knew while we knew you're certainly the final girl because she's framed a particular way yeah. um she's not framed as like you know a survivor she's not there like you know rescuing anybody or anything like that it's kind of like just out of necessity like she is afraid for much of the time that she is confronting the evil, but overcoming the fear enough to survive. I'm so and I like that about her. About Adrian King, talking about her in Friday Oh, I thought you were talking, but... you were saying like Adrian King. I thought you were referring to someone else. I have no idea. Um, so anyway. Um, <laughs> well, no, you do have an idea. Let me finish my thought. I can't, oh, you I confused can't remember me. I was, was off somewhere else. Sorry. <laughs> I'm tired. And I'm trying to make a point and I can't remember what it was. Okay. So she, anyway, Adrian King. Yes. <laughs> is that person that I just described. And so I guess, so I, I, I don't feel bad necessarily about critiquing this film for offering us a quote unquote heroine yeah. or a person in the heroine position, you know, the final girl position uh, by default, um, yeah. who is so incredibly uh, non committal in any of her <laughs> relationships, and who finally, when she does kind of like take charge, still backpedals, like the way you described yeah. in the final moments of the film. To turn on the man who has just saved her yeah. and go clutch the hand of the man who was attacking her. Yeah. Um, and in a very unsatisfying way. There's no Scream 3 Sydney confronting her truth about Roman kind of thing going on with this movie. It's much more, what are you thinking, woman? <laughs> yeah. Like, no, I'm just getting like an image just... of Roman like cutting off his hand when Sydney goes to grab it at the end it's just like <laughs> no i will not even share this moment with you <laughs> oh don't ruin the moment for um, me. i love that moment <laughs> but yeah but i think what, what you're when you speak about adrian king like what, what we have to remember with alice is that she you know even though it is a struggle and it takes her yeah. like 
five times <laughs> to like just to, to realize okay you can't just knock her out you need to mm-hmm. deliver some fatal damage as well like before she yeah. finally decapitates her and you know you use the word with, with this movie of just like final girl or final couple by default because i don't i mean i just watched it and i already don't remember but like don't they defeat him by accident like someone accidentally uh knocks into one of those like support beams and that ends up like collapsing the the room and and he gets caved in under it so it's not even they don't even defeat him um by their own doing it's just it's just accidental and i think that you know that's what annoys me when people you know talk shit about uh, you know other final girls like in particular like sam from scream five because everything that you know, people will criticize about, you know, the, these final girls who don't really do anything or just, you know, they it, they happen to stay alive by the end of the movie because of someone else's doing or by accident. And then you have final girls mm. uh, like Sam in, in Scream 5 who literally take a knife and go to town, like stab the killer 22 <laughs> times, slit their throat, mm. and, then, and then shoot off three more bullets just for good measure. But yet somehow they'll attach onto like any sort of criticism just just to keep that character down a notch and not actually mm. praise them for for the accomplishments that you know that they bring to the genre and what you know what they sure. do for for the 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 title of final girl because there are yeah. so many worthy final girls who are so much better like doing so much better work than so many of them and they're still just kind of tossed to the wayside and you know i think that yeah. like we've agreed that alice is not the strongest friday the 13th final girl but she gets yeah. there she gets the job done she in in her own terms or on her own terms and you know that's what we can respect about them and i think that what i've recognized with the way that you and i think because you know we always have uh differing opinions on things but i think that mm-hmm. you know something that we do agree on is our characters um for the most part especially uh, the the final girls or final women and how they overcome whatever the adversity is and i think that where we've kind of joined together in just in our thinking is like how well uh is this character established like how how well did did she you know earn her right to be there to present herself mm-hmm. as a as an independent character who's not being pushed around by all or influenced or defined by other things going on in the movie and how they alone overcame the challenges in the end and that's why you know we we right. recognize you know our Ripley's and you know yes. our some of the time Lori's but Sydney's Nancy's um, yes. Aaron um, all, Grace uh, ready or not so it. You know, when yeah. with movies like this that, you know, I think that there is a nostalgia to, like there's a lot of um, elements to My Bloody Valentine that uh, are, are really great about it. But at the end of the day, if the, if the character, if like the main character or the final girl or whoever is mm-hmm. just underperforming, I think that that's where we've kind of like drawn the line. Yeah. Have you noticed that? Yeah. Also, it's so (laughs) interesting to me to bring it back to Valentine because Marley Shelton is a final girl by default. The and (laughs) I just sorry. I just want to bring up because in the Fright Club thing, and this was your line because you we were like go over like what what the story is about in both movies. And it was the exact yeah. same thing. It was like a blonde woman who's just jerked around by the men in her life. And that was like yes. the most defining thing about both of them. <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> um, but she, uh, uh, and it ends ambiguously because in both cases, the killer kind of like is left to flourish, you know, yeah. to varying degrees in both movies. So you wonder like, is he going to come after her again? Kind of thing. But yeah, um, that said, it's an odd thing to kind of favor Valentine, but I think what I am favoring is, you know, the, the, the camp value of it, the Melrose place of it all. Yeah. And the, um, I don't, I don't, it, I can't say it any other way. The badness. Yeah. Like I really relish the badness that's Valentine play. also has <laughs> Denise Richards. And I think like in that episode, we agreed yes. that Denise Richards was 
Paige was the, the strongest character. And if Valentine mm. was made today, that whoever the main character, like the main character probably would have been more of a Denise Richards mm-hmm. type uh, of just someone sure. who was, uh, you know, owned, you know, who they were, was in control of everything yeah. and didn't take shit yeah. from, you know, her friends or men or anyone. So, um, yeah. Yeah, it's Absolutely. interesting, you know, that, you know, going back to, to the, the sentiment of like, you know, a final girl in one movie, the doomed friend in another, because I think that uh, Paige, the, the Denise Richards character, would totally be a final girl in another movie. So it's just, it's very oh, unfortunate that, yes. that that's yeah. just by default, that's what uh, happened with her in uh, and, in that movie. <laughs> and speaking of things happening by default, yeah. what uh, what is your opinion of the uh, kind of afterthought backstory that's... I mean, we get a lot of exposition that's front-loaded, but then we yeah. also kind of get like a bomb dropped on us in a flashback that exposes things within a few seconds, just kind of like, yeah. oh, so, yeah, you're probably wondering why. <laughs> yeah. um, uh, what's his name? <clears throat> Axel yeah. is the one who's behind the mask. So... Here's a little montage. Okay, see, makes sense. Everybody happy? Okay, cool. We're gonna yeah. go on with the movie in the present day now. What is your? I kind of love that? how he's just <laughs> still like he's like he's he's just motionless, expressionless. It's like the mask comes off, and it's sort of like here's my neutral face, and I'm just going to like it's almost like he was reliving the memory in that moment mm-hmm. um, yeah. for the sake of them. Like, that he somehow was able to, like, broadcast his thoughts to, like, everyone in in, in the room, like, all the other characters uh, found that out at the same time. Um, and then it was just like, okay, it was almost like, okay, here's a, a better reference, like, Family Guy, because they do, like, the cutscenes, and I think there was an episode where they go back to the pilot, and they're watching themselves, and they're just yeah. like, wait, why is everyone just, like, you know, they say a joke, and then they just stand still, and they're like, oh, they're doing cutaways, <laughs> And it was like, that's what it reminded me of. It's just like, hold on, we're going to pause everything so Axel right. can, you know, have his cutaway to, his, to the trauma right. of his childhood. Yeah. And then it was like, okay, cutaway over. Now let's fight. And I think right. I mostly loved like when they came in and uh, I think it was like Newbie who was just like, yeah, we talked to uh, the mental institution. Harry Warden died five years ago. Yeah. And then they're like, it's Axel. What? And then I think it was like Hannigan yeah. or Hanniger, uh, Hannigan. Um, I've been watching Buffy. Um, but um, <laughs> the, mm-hmm. Mayor Hanniger is like, oh, yeah, that's right. Axel's father was killed by Harry Warden. Yeah, <laughs> and it was yeah. just like, <laughs> why didn't anyone oh. mention that before? <laughs> um, <laughs> None of us ever sus- remember that. Thank God we remembered it now. Yeah. Uh, in the nick of time. <laughs> I agree with you in terms of like the family guy reference too, because for me, uh, cause again, we always, when we do think the same way, yeah. it's always slightly different. For me, it's like if my bloody Valentine were a musical, that's where Axel breaks into song, <laughs> <laughs> like an exposition song yeah. about like where he came from and why he's motivated to do what he does and everything like that. Oh, and uh, you know, a refrain like, but don't judge me, you know, something kind of thing like, yeah. And happy Valentine's Day. Well, um, we do have the we have the song at the end, the Harry Warden ballad. Oh God! <laughs> and I, we, I don't even. Well, we were talking about this before we we started because I was just like, "What does this remind yeah. me of?" And it, it's that it's that old like classical thing. It's like, and you're like, "Oh, green sleeves." I'm like, "Yeah." yeah. And I'm just like, okay, so essentially Green Sleeves or like the Harry Warden ballad is Green Sleeves as to what like London Bridge is falling down is to the Silver Shamrock <laughs> Halloween 3 melody. <laughs> I wonder if that's what gave um, uh, 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 Tommy, remind me, oh God. Tommy my, my Lee tired. Wallace. My, Tommy Lee Wallace, thank yeah. you. If that's what inspired Tommy Lee Wallace to like plug that in there <laughs> he saw my bloody valentine and was like oh paul, my gosh yeah let's just take paul zaza or is it zaza yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the composer zaza. of, of uh, my bloody valentine i think well, yeah, no but the, I, the story with uh season of the witch is that they wanted to make this jingle but 
they're like, well, what are we going to do? And they're like, okay, well, here's royalty-free music. So they just... Yes, absolutely. Because it's in the public domain of, like, London Bridges Well, I think Greensleeves is, too. I don't think Greensleeves has any kind of copyright or anything like that. I think it's public domain. I mean, I looked up the the ballad, like, the Harry Warden ballad, and I didn't see any connection to Greensleeves. Um, um, like, it's not exactly like it, but it just has a very, like, green sleeve Venus to it. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like when you when you Skype call me and I start singing, Mama, it's raining, it's raining red. It sounds oh my gosh. like it okay, just, to me. <laughs> just for context for everyone listening. So the, because when we do this, because we, we record off of Skype, and when you, like, do a Skype call, it's like, dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 dun. Like everyone knows that. Yeah. Um, and for for whatever reason, you connected it back to like the Halloween six, like uh mommy, it's raining, it's raining it's red. Raining and red. then like literally every time we initiate our like episodes or like, you know, we'll we'll call into it and I pick up and that's what I hear is Edward singing that <laughs> fucking thing. So usually like I don't put my my uh my earphones in right away because uh, just so we can get past that because you you don't just do that you you've like kind of evolved it into a share like you sing it as yeah like, mama's raining yeah. it's raining yeah I, <laughs> which is <laughs> barely very, share that is barely share but. it was like your like canadian accent uh in, in <laughs> The impressions are not on point uh, <laughs> this particular Okay, but anyway, episode. sorry. I felt like I needed to, to add context to that because nobody would have understood yes. what you were talking about. Yes, of course. Um, and I appreciate that. Yes. Um, I wanted to ask you, because mm. um, I, I don't know, it, it, it gave me question. <laughs> I wondered for a second. Um, Howard, mm. the, the, you know, the jester, as it were, yeah. of this crew, um, abandons Patty... And uh, a pleading, <laughs> no, <laughs> and a pleading. She, um, although <laughs> I was waiting because I couldn't remember her name, and I usually <laughs> like to hear it in the context of the movie. And when I finally heard them call her Patty, I wrote it down and I said it like Principal Skinner when he first learns her name. I'm like Patty, <laughs> but um, anyway, uh, I just thought I'd share that. Anyway, Thanks. Howard. So he leaves yeah. her and Sarah <laughs> pleading with him, like "Don't leave us," and he's just off. You know, fucking off, just like, you know, yeah. whatever, I'm going to take care of myself. And um, then when they're climbing up that ladder to escape, yeah. he's revealed, it is him, right, to be hanging from above. So what do you okay. think went down? <laughs> well, I think that there's actually two uh, minor killers, and the second one is Stu Mocker. <laughs> Or you know, played by Emily Mortimer, but that got cut. So it's Angelina. <laughs> it's Angelina from Scream Three. Yeah. <laughs> this is her origin story. <laughs> um, Even as a toddler, she was killing. But yeah. So I mean, yeah, that's another thing. This killer, he couldn't have done it alone. Maybe there is a supernatural element, and his father is supposed to be. Kind of hovering and killing with him. Or not his father, he can't but, do this but alone. The, the killer of his father. The killer of his father. Harry Warden killed Axel's father. Why did I think Harry Warden was Axel's father? That's how checked out I was <laughs> by the climax. <laughs> no, because he was watching from under the bed and got like the blood sprayed That's on his face right. and then he was sucking his thumb. I forgot. Yeah. Okay, I, for some reason I thought like he watched his dad kill another man but what would he be doing no, his father no was like even... his father was I, the yes. uh the supervisor at the the mine who right. who wasn't paying Couldn't any be... attention <laughs> <You> know, like, <laughs> they were you off going to the sh- dance when all those miners <laughs> <laughs> well those methane levels got, went unchecked <laughs> yes look what you or look what you did to him but um <laughs> That would be great if it were if there were like a Mrs. something or other. Oh, <laughs> if the mom. miner took off their mask and it was revealed to be Betsy Palmer, I would be. Oh my god! This, this would be. That would have been amazing. Yeah, th- this would <laughs> even be better than Friday the Thirteenth. That's what they needed. Though, that's like that's a... the missing ingredient that they didn't have. 
Betsy yeah. Palmer to show up for the last 13 minutes of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> or even, I mean, that's the thing. Again, like, you front load yeah. so much exposition that there's not really any mystery left. So that finally when, I mean, again, like, to, to bring, we've been bringing up a lot of other movies uh, this pod, but we were talking about, like, the course of Barbarian, and even though we kind of stand, you know, at opposite ends uh, yeah. of, of the spectrum uh, on that movie, uh, on the course it takes, uh, in its second and third act. Yeah. Um, for me personally, those are curveballs that I enjoy <laughs> and that I can follow. When this one finally comes to like reveal that is a curveball, they're supposed intended to be a curveball, but it's so late in the movie that I'm just kind of like, huh? What? Oh. Yeah. Oh, okay. I guess that happened. All right. And I and it didn't even read for me this particular time. I didn't even remember. Yeah. The reveal. I didn't. I wasn't paying close. I wasn't paying close enough attention. Um. <laughs> I think for well, for me, like just in terms of barbarian, because like what I didn't love about that is that the, the first act of the movie there was, um, it, it, we basically were with the characters. We didn't know what was going on. Right. But during the second act, we knew what was going on, but Justin Long's character didn't know what was going on. So that was frustrating mm -hmm. when like we as an audience are several steps ahead of the characters. And mm -hmm. that's not necessarily the case with My Bloody Valentine because I feel that like we're just as in the dark as everyone else because we're still thinking what's the mystery mm -hmm. with Harry Warden, even though it's not done as as interesting like it's it's not handled deftly to the to the point like uh, like a like how Friday the 13th did it where just you know planting the little seeds earlier on um or even like scream for example like the first scream where we know that Neil Prescott never checked into the hotel and he's missing and mm -hmm. tomorrow's the anniversary of his wife's murder and someone saw his car in the bushes like things like that whereas i feel like yeah. here it was it was almost like the, the same um, Friday the 13th ripoff failure thing of just like, we have all the elements, but we don't know how to properly disperse them. And I think that, yeah. that that's more so the issue. So I had, you know, it's not really, really the curveball of it all. Like just like Axel being revealed as the killer doesn't upset me. It's just more so the mm. way it was handled. I would have preferred... Uh, she should have been the anyone. killer. <laughs> that would have been well, the, that I, would have been the twist. I don't even care who the killer is. Yeah. I know who I want want to survive because aside from just kind of like loving Mabel while she's alive, oh, I love that after she dies, yeah. uh, Chief Newbie like sees that <clears throat> saran wrapped uh, heart box that he is now triggered by. You know yeah. because he's always seen a lot of them and they always have. Uh, a wet heart but um, <laughs> the dogs so, were so into that too <laughs> yeah oh my god and they were angry too when he i bet you those were like, like real dog. straight dogs like they're they just yeah them up feral and, yeah feral stray dog like wild dogs i'm Some sure canadian because feral one canadian of them was dogs. not letting go to like he was barking actively at yeah. chief newbie anyway so when newbie finally like you know but sees the the saran wrapped one and like unwraps it and everything like that cautiously and opens it up and reads the note and it says be my valentine mabel um and he seems to be really affected by it well they had a thing it's one they? of those i couldn't tell if they had or if it was like this thing that they'd always kind of like been dancing up to and maybe this valentine's day that they were finally going to be celebrating was like the path there like you know like now we have an excuse to kind I of like your head be a little bit <laughs> yeah be a little bit more forward with our things because this is the thing they're interesting enough to me i care i cared enough yeah. about her and because she cared about him yeah uh, I care. I, I care about him because he, he doesn't really do much. But this is something significant because he yeah. just kind of he just, his face just goes cold, and it's just kind of like you just kind of feel the loss of like you know like what could have been between the two of them. But what I you know really what? wish, yeah, we're gonna say that they should be the final couple. I want them to be the final yeah. couple. Yeah, I would love to see the two of them because like it's that it's is unconventional. A curveball, you know, yeah, absolutely. Like that. So much about like the 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 turns that this movie takes for the most part are absolutely conventional and are so predictable. And I would have loved it if they could have been like, yeah, you think these young lovers are the ones who are going to be left standing and fighting at the them, end of this yeah. thing? No, it's 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 these two older people, these people who are like you know moving into their their what forties, fifties. I can't tell what age yeah. anybody is anymore, but. Um, I don't know. It's just, and, and that would have been sweet. I would have loved yeah. to have seen Mabel 
you know, like find it in her, find that fighting spirit in her and see him because <laughs> he's got training and shit. So, you know, he's got like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> this agility and, yeah. you know, this strength and stuff. And just watching the two of them like band together and like kind of like have a successful Valentine's Day because, of course, I want them both to survive at the end and find their love. See, I would root yeah. for that fucking final couple. That would have been amazing. I so agree. I, share that. I agree. <laughs> wow. Ages Here of we the are. Damn. Just, we're just we're just rewriting history and making it <laughs> making yeah. it work for us. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, isn't that what podcasts are all about? <laughs> yes, I, don't know. I still have no idea what ours is about. We just we just show uh, me up. neither. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we just kind of show up and what, what people take what comes. But <laughs> <laughs> um, I did write down phonetically. Hallry Warden is Bach, because that is a B O C K. By the time we get to the end of the movie, like he is full of all reward in his balk. So anyway, I, I just, God, um, I, I do love that, like the the exposition of like the flashback of like like the the one that happens where they they show Harry Warden when he has that like crazy. I think it's it's the uh, the bartender because he is like I was the oh, one yeah, that found yeah, him, yeah. and then you just see like the ah, like screaming into ah! the like yeah. I love that. Um, that was so good. <laughs> also. Can we just talk about how the uh, the bartender is essentially the de facto crazy Ralph? Roll yeah. yeah, he's basically totally. Yeah. I mean, they're not even tr- dressing it up. Like, yeah. <laughs> but I do appreciate. I appreciate his kill. Actually, I love the pickaxe through like his jaw and yeah. poking out the eyeball through his eye, and even the misdirection of just like. Planting yeah. the, the, the prank and then, you know, oh, I got to keep going back and, and check it because it's so funny to him. <laughs> it was, that's camp. Like, I was I was all on board for that because he just couldn't stop opening the door. It, it, it keyed into some kind of, like, kiddish glee. And because he's mm. so looming and serious and, you know, like, you damn kids, like, the rest of the movie, to see him actually having fun replaying the prospect of this scare that he thought was going to take the bejesus out of, you know, these damn kids. I just to watch him, <laughs> you know, <laughs> opening and close. I don't know. There was, there was a freedom there, a childlike quality that I embraced. So yeah, I appreciated that as well. Mm. Um, at the end of the day, uh, there's another thing. Maybe, maybe that's a lens I need to watch this movie through. Cause there was an exchange early in the film that told that kind of cued me into the world we were in um and maybe if i keep that lens because <laughs> it reads more like okay i'll just read the exchange to you um uh, i think it was was it howard and some random girl i don't even remember what her name was oh gretchen it's in the mm-hmm. line but he says gretchen you know what look real good on you me and she just goes Suck it in and zip it up, will ya? And she just walks away. <laughs> there was something about it that felt very mid twentieth century to me. Like I don't know if it's like forties and it's like a Rosalind Russell, Cary Grant kind of thing, or if it's like fifties and it's more like a Mamie Van Doren with her hands on her hips, like you know. <laughs> but suck it in and zip it up, will ya? <laughs> you know, like chewing gum or something. Yeah, there was it's something... like the uh, the what's her face in Jason Lives, the the final girl in that. <laughs> yeah, kind of like I, yeah. maybe. What's maybe it to you? Yeah, you know. Like... <laughs> yeah, if I watch it, like I'm watching kind of like a screwball comedy <laughs> uh, that just has happens to have some horrific things in it. Like maybe the more problematic <laughs> aspects, because I mean, there's plenty of content from that period. That I watch, but I can enjoy because I'm, you know, I'm transposing the key in my head. I'm going like, well, it was, you know, this was the time they were living in. They didn't, women weren't allowed to so and so and fill in the blank yeah. here and whatever. So I there's know, maybe even I'll a line in the movie back into loving this movie. There's but, even a line where where they're just because what you're talking about, like Hollis, uh, when he's just like, yeah, let's go down to the mine, and they're like, you know the rules, no women down in the mine. <laughs> so already it's like, yeah, 1981. There's, there's all these strict gender rules about, you know, who's allowed to go down there. Who can we hire? And it was TJ. 
<laughs> and it was TJ who said the line, yeah. I remember, because he didn't say rules. He said rules. Rebels. Weird. And he's also got I, that, I really that want... um, the, the little scarf, the little ascot, and his shirt's like unbuttoned halfway down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and he's okay. What also, party I mean, was he going to? That's what I want to know. I, I also think he's a shitty, uh, I can't use the word lover because that makes it sound like I'm alluding to his abilities, his skill yeah. as a lover. I, well, I guess a shitty boyfriend or a shitty mm. compatriot. Let's put it that way. Because the way he reveals, like he's the one who makes the decision at the party for Sarah to disclose the fact that she really wants to be with him and not with. Uh, fucking! I keep forgetting his name. See, you're 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 making me forget their names now. Axel, yeah. <laughs> but um, just the way he does it, like he's not even making eye contact with either of them. He's just sitting there, just like go on, tell him, Sarah. And it, again, like in that controlling, domineering yeah. way that you described. But even more Forces than domineering, it's almost it's almost sociopathic <laughs> because I feel um like it's not connected to. Anything other than uh, maybe a competitiveness or um, like a, a need to c create discord in th their relationship, the relationship between uh, Axel and Sarah. Like it, if he were to stand shoulder to shoulder with Sarah and kind of put his arm around her and there's a way to do this, you know, and gently just kind of tell Axel. I mean, Axel may still explode and everything like that, even though they don't know that he's crazy yet. Yeah. But um <laughs> Yeah, like everything it's so confrontational yeah. and so begging to cause some kind of like yeah. ruckus and it's like again like you're just harshing my buzz you also buddy. remind like, me of like how on. convoluted his like scheme is like if you can call it i mean i i, I guess we're led to believe that it's a psychotic episode but whatever but it's like he's not killing because of her or this mm. relationship between them. He's killing because of, you know, like Valentine's Day is back in town, you know? So yeah. it's it's almost like the whole love triangle thing is like it's just a giant red herring in a way. Um, right. But like, but still like it's completely useless to the plot because he, he does turn out to be the killer, but it's just like for none of the reasons that that are being set up throughout the movie. So maybe that's why I don't like, like, that's why I say like, it, you know, the, the setup of, of like the reveal and all that by the end wasn't handled deftly because the whole movie, they just yeah. spent uh, his character pining over her or just, you know, just like trying to yeah. um, salvage the, the scraps of their relationship while she's, you know, going back to her ex. So it just felt like a lot of Would wasted you... time. I think that that's that's the problem yeah. I have with this movie mostly. What if that you just made me think because you were talking about like making the probability of making Sarah the killer? Yeah. I mean, that would be interesting if another thing that's like kind of like making her not want to be with him is the fact that like maybe she was into it in the beginning because she had something against uh that girl that gets killed <laughs> in the beginning mm -hmm. and so she didn't mind her dying but then what he kind of got a taste for it but she's like i'm done and so then the guy who left so there's behind, two of they're both the killer yeah, yeah. i'm cool okay, i mean is there anybody else well i would say like, that you know maybe she was i would killer? say that like it would still make sense that she was the killer at the in that opening scene because that's why when the girl goes to take the mask off and, and the miner's oh, like, and no, the, no, yeah. no. Cause you take that right. off and then you just be like, you know, blonde on blonde, uh, female action there. And that would have been like, <laughs> uh, no, this is not what I signed up for. <laughs> Different movie. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, in this movie, she probably would have been like, Oh, all right. And just gone away along with the girl with the, the little heart yeah. tattoo. <laughs> yeah. The girl with the heart tattoo just would have yeah. been kind of like, Oh, well, okay. Wouldn't be yeah. my first time. <laughs> <laughs> We're already but, here. <laughs> we already made the trip yeah, right. down. <laughs> yeah. We already stripped down. I'm already stripped down to my skivvies. Yeah. So may as well. You're pretty. I probably would have liked that. I mean, like, you know how I love my lady killers. So, yeah. you know, I think th that would have been something else to just have Sarah be the killer. Um, and that would have even felt more, you know, if they're copying Friday the 13th, uh, just like, may yeah. as well, you know, just. 
And like laying the groundwork for Scream, where you know you need a twosome, you need yeah. like two people. Well, too. no, I would, I would just say just Sarah, not just Sarah, Sarah and Axel. But I, I want to take care of that teleportation thing. I want there to be more than one killer, so I don't have to sit there wondering how did Howard end up like le- abandoning them way down there and then hanging way up there. I guess he just and, killed you know, him and then took him up the ladder and then because there was like a thing because we never see <sighs> Axel. And the miner at the same time, like that when they go down into the mine, he's still at, up at the surface, and he kills. Remember, he kills the of... guy in the kitchen, like dunks his head in the the hot dog pot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that is a lot of rungs to climb up and down to kill here and there and what I mean, and then still kind of like be in your plain clothes in the party, like you know, making shit. You know, being yeah. a shit starter and everything like that. I have no idea. He is the original I, I, Roman Bridger. I don't know what to say. I, I, <laughs> I think I'd, <laughs> I think I'd like to prefer to think that Howard, out of shame yeah. for abandoning his friends, hung himself. <laughs> he made it all the way to the top yeah. and felt such shame that he got away scot free. That he yeah. thought, I can't live. With I honestly this. don't even think that himself. like Howard's actions are the most egregious of anyone down in that mine at, at that moment. Like, he was basically put in charge of watching... Like, first of all, these <laughs> these women who, who you know, are just like, we can handle ourselves, blah, blah, blah. But it's just like, no, you're supposed to watch us. And it's just like, isn't... That should be your the boyfriend's responsibility. Like, I feel like there was no planning. It was just, like, very poorly communicated at the last minute. Yeah. And he probably saw it just like, if I hang out with these people, I'm going to get killed. You know, he probably, he did end up getting killed going that way, but it was just one of those wow. things where I don't think that there was like, there's really anything, like no nobody made sound judgment in when they went down. Like the oxygen supply was, was so thin that, you know, it was just <laughs> making them stupider. The- <laughs> Zach Cherry, the truth comes out. I knew you were a Howard apologist the day I met you. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know who Howard is. You know, you like you had to remind me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the 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 jokey guy, the one who's like scaring them, the Shelly of this group, you yeah. know, the one who's like the one who snorted coke. <sighs> so stupid. Yeah. Anyway. I think I've said everything I have to say about this. Right. <laughs> um, that's cool. I'll I'll just say um, final thoughts. Like I, I I'm glad I own this. I I think that it's a great holiday movie. I think it's just in terms of being a Friday the Thirteenth ripoff. Uh, it still mm-hmm. succeeds a lot better than most of them. Like it's it's still relevant forty plus years later. Like people still remembered and they still watch it like there's something to be said for that yeah uh i'm actually surprised like we do have the remake uh in 2009 but i'm surprised that there weren't more movies like i'm I'm surprised that there's not a franchise of just like the minor killer or you know harry warden Mm. you know you know you have like prom night one two three four and five where it's just like hello mary lou of like ghosts coming back like why couldn't harry warden's spirit come back as a like a, a, a jason Voorhees type minor like that would have been so it lo- amazing in the eighties. Just, but just because it lost money in its initial release, so mm. studios weren't motivated to capitalize on it at yeah. all. And um, but I mean that because that cult following that you're 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 alluding to, and, the, and it developed over the years that followed. I mean, like a lot of horror movies that kind of fell through the slats in the cinema, uh, VHS and um, you know rental uh, uh, outlets. Right. were a great a great boon to movies like this. And I'm glad. I, I'm glad I own it too. I, I'm looking forward to watching it again in August when no one is going to be watching this movie or talking about <laughs> it, and I'll probably enjoy it a whole lot yeah. more. <laughs> it's, just, it's like, I'll watch Black Christmas in April and Halloween totally. in January. Um, you do you. Ooh, Chris, people do that Christmas in July thing where they start, like, you know, creating their crafts and everything like that. I should watch, like, Silent Night, Deadly Night, and Black Christmas in July and just see. <laughs> and just, just make your see. make your homemade craft, like, the, just like Mabel. <laughs> just like Mabel. Yeah. I'll be making my Valentine's in August. Yeah. All right. Let's get to the cherry picker. It's not like they killed people. So, D, 
Azir Edward, who are we choosing as a cherry on top? I didn't get to sing Hollis's praises enough because I really did enjoy him in this movie. I thought he was a good contender. Yeah. But of course, Mabel, you know, my heart belongs to Mabel. So I'd be fine with either of them. Anyone else you'd be comfortable putting in that position? Let's give it to Mabel. Yeah. I actually always remember Mabel. Like I always remember the, the name and the character. So and I and I and after listening to your spiel about her and Jake Newby uh, being <laughs> the final couple, I I, I think Jake. That, yeah. Yeah. What an interesting so turn! I, I did not uh, you know talk about curveball. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> All right, Cherry Picker. Last week we asked you who deserves to die the most in Barbarian. I nominated AJ Gilbride. You nominated Frank. And across Patreon, Instagram, and YouTube, the vote was 219 for AJ versus 670 for Frank. What? Does that surprise you? That's amazing. It just makes me happy. So yeah. sure, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> that Wow. I feel like it's my birthday. Thanks, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think that, like, uh, well, I'll, I'll read through the comments in a second here. But I, it just seemed like a lot of people were just like, both. But I mean, right. it's just sure. like, who, who edges it out uh, a little bit? That's and, what I wrestled with. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> so let's just read some of the, uh, the comments yes. here. So Norma uh, Panish Hey guys, I love this show and your fun dynamic every week brings me all the horror joys. Thank you, or sorry, thanks for what you do. And for me, no pod is ever too long. This week I voted AJ. Oh, thank you. But only by like 0.01 over Frank Ah. if we're killing them when they died in the movie. Although Frank clearly had the most and worst crimes over AJ. His act of suicide and mercy on AJ made me see some remorse there versus AJ, who's also a sexual offender, wasn't accountable nor remorseful ever, and knowingly risked Tessa's life to save his own, although she had risked hers to help him. I love Justin Long, but that AJ's gotta go. And my cherry on top (laughs) is Mr. Hottie McKiller Clown Bill Skarsgård oh. Keith. <laughs> it's like a really long. Sweet. Uh, how are all those Skarsgårds so beautiful and talented? Genetics, cruel genetics. I'm <laughs> guessing. I don't know, but that's great. That's really interesting, yeah. huh? And because I I never saw that as remorse, uh, Frank offing himself at all. I just thought it was escape. But anyway. Zedward Gory. Well, this is tough, but even if it amounted to nothing, at least AJ had a moment of self-reflection. He also brought a ton of comic relief. Frank was a monster through and through. Bye-bye, Richard Brake. Just wondering, did either of you consider nominating Kurt uh, Braunohler's character, Frank's neighbor, something something contributing to the economic decline of Detroit? I don't even <laughs> remember that. <laughs> because he was moving away. Because, yeah. yeah, everybody was moving away because the neighborhood was going to shit and yeah. everything. No, I didn't think about that. Silent Saturn. While I agree that evil characters who uh, convince themselves that they're the good guy are the absolute worst, looking at you, mm-hmm. Sir Kristen Cole. I just can't ignore the monster that is Frank, especially since he got away with it all his life and got to go out on his own terms. He deserved so much worse, he gets the axe. PJ Hunt says, this was my favorite horror movie of last year. Mm. Was this your favorite horror movie of last year? You know me with favorites? Jesus. No, I do know you with favorites because you do celebrate your favorites, but you just don't like when I ask you. You have to, you you need to like do it on your own terms. I don't like being cornered, but I mean, uh, uh, probably not. It was probably, uh, it it may be between X and Pearl, but I I really have to think about it. I don't know. I don't know. I enjoyed the year. Rashim says, Frankie, has got to go. Uh, he was just pure evil, lying his way into that woman's house. Uh, the uh, sorry, theory of everything. I want a movie about Frank. Hot dog mm, emoji. No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we God, don't need that no. prequel. I feel like we, everything well, we with don't. that character was like basically <laughs> summed up. Apparently, theory of everything needs it though. So okay, cool. <laughs> Stop. 
<laughs> uh, Grant Dempsey, damn, both do. Uh, but AJ is basically Frank on a lesser scale. So got to give it to Frank for the sheer magnitude of his crimes. There Thank were you. entire human lives that began and ended down inside those tunnels because of him. The whole thing with Frank and the mother struck me as pretty tasteless, to be honest. Loved the mm. first third of the movie. Felt a bit let down by the last two thirds. Okay. I am Solomon. Yo, the Airbnb operator deserves it the most. <laughs> Is she not a character? <laughs> She's got to be in on it. She's uh, super shady. Hopefully someone definitely brings her up. Uh, I mean, we we crossed that bridge a little bit with Evil Dead. I don't know a voice on the phone if that's a character technically according to the rules. We haven't gone over the rules in a long time. Yeah, I... Yeah, I think that they have to be seen on screen in some capacity. So. Yeah, I, 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 we'll, we'll look up the the rules are posted on Instagram in one of <laughs> in one of like the uh, um, what do you Stories? call it? the highlights? The highlights. I think it's oh, like okay, the, yeah. the cherry picker yeah. highlights in, in there. Yeah. Um, uh, but no, I agree. She she sucked too because like where are the customer service skills? Like he oh. he. I mean he was being a piece of shit at that at that point but i mean like mm -hmm, he's mm -hmm. still a customer there's a way to deal with that and not just hang up and the fact that as far as we know they never called tess back because like there was a whole night and then next day where there was no like callback from that agency so i think they just sucked in general so i i, mm. I agree i agree with uh with that uh sentiment uh i am okay. solomon uh, everything mm -hmm. weather, Frank, because he's extremely mysterious and just a creepy old man. <laughs> Being <laughs> mysterious is a sin now. Tyker <laughs> Vic, I voted Frank for obvious reasons, but dishonorable mention to the two cops Tess was trying to get help from. My blood was boiling mm. in rage when they just yes. completely gaslighted her. I wanted to kill them my damn self, but not really. Mm. LOL. <laughs> Mendejo, nice. not a cherry picker actually being very difficult for me. I'm going to have to go with Frank just because of the sheer amount of women and the barbaric behavior. Anthony oh. DePuzo, this is a good one. Both deserve to die, but I'm going with Frank. He was truly evil and disgusting. The amount of women he tortured and abused is sickening. Also, Justin Long deserved one of the best comedic moments uh, or sorry, delivered one of the best comedic moments of 2022 with the tape measure square footage scene. So he earned his survival until the very end of the movie. I laughed out loud. <laughs> Suki Ikari, 1203. Frank just gives me the creeps. Thomas Baker, easy. Frank. Okay, I can see where this is going. Blue Box 87. <laughs> AJ could easily be a long-lost son of Frank's. Both are horrible for obvious reasons. But Frank gets my vote. The, thing, the things he did were just barbaric. Jeremy Huff. This was honestly a tough decision, but I gotta say AJ. Frank was deplorable and the true villain of the movie, but AJ was a victim-blaming, self-centered, all-around horrible mm. character. The second you think he's learned and might become a better person, he quite literally drops it and ends up paying for it. Mm. Justice uh, Kowaleski. Both. <laughs> Sucked says AJ, because <laughs> I'm used <laughs> to seeing Justin Long get killed in horror movies. <laughs> Movie Maniac 03. I choose Frank. Love the actors. Hate both characters. But Frank grosses me uh, more out than AJ did. But he should have used some dodgeball skills to get out of there. <laughs> Sierra Campbell. Frank 100% deserves to die. Even though AJ was also awful, the laughs he provided me uh, world measuring that room saved him. Sorry, what the last he provided me while measuring that room saved him. Mm. Um, auto correct accident there. Uh, <laughs> Blueberry, they kind of both did. Rob <laughs> Rangel, this was one I could go either way, but I went with Frank because he was truly awful and didn't have any redeeming qualities. AJ had some funny bits and I thought he might have actually changed his tune, but he didn't. 
Kayla Henderson, I voted for Frank. He was a disgusting, vile man. I found Barbarian was lacking a lot of story and ended so abruptly that I found myself wanting more of a scare. The actors were great. The movie was just a little dry. And then finally, mm -hmm. Matthias Egeman, they did an... They did an homage to Justin Long's Eyeballs and Jeepers Creepers. I'll never watch that film again or even think to watch the rest because of the... Okay. Um, yeah, gotcha. <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> that was fun. <laughs> so... <laughs> you win, good sir. Oh, you have to is... cherry pick first. This is tough because there's so many reasons to dislike so many of these people. I, none of, no one of them really stands out to me. I, I guess I'd, I, I could conceivably say, now that I know who he is, he, like Axel's father, but I don't know his name. Um, I think it's but just because like... all of this is be all this is because of him. It would just be a cute town with a sweet name and a Valentine's Day tradition if they would have just, you know, done their yeah. job. But what, what so whatever? I don't, it, what is Axel's father a character? He exists only in. Flashback, I don't know if he has a name. Flashback and dream sequences count. That was one thing that we agreed okay. upon in the, the rules. Okay. Because I remember we distinctly thought, like, when it comes to Halloween 2, what about uh, Lori's mom? In the, just, just for that fucking, oh. like, <laughs> how many times do I have to tell you? I'm not your mother. Like, who says that <laughs> to a kid? What a bitch. <laughs> we'll, we'll come to that bridge when we cross it. But, yeah. <laughs> Or cross that bridge when we come to it. Yeah. See, I am tired. <laughs> um, okay. Um, well, then, okay, I'll say Axel's father. Um, he's the first domino of the movie. So <laughs> everything else would have been completely preventable. So uh, if he has a name, Axel Sr., I don't know. Whatever that guy's name is, yeah. sure. I'm sure there's a last name there somewhere. Um, okay, Probably. interesting. I had no idea who I was going to pick. I was just, I, I knew yeah. you had one, so I was just going to randomly go off of that and you know i'll probably go with um tj i think that we you know it's either him or or fucking sarah or you know even axel <laughs> like I, like any of the, the three leads but I, I i think that maybe him especially i don't know there's just something about because you mentioned it yourself like the the way that he kind of forces her hand in the whole situation yeah and just everything and that the that that little ascot i don't know what what that that's yeah was. like he left town abruptly did not tell her and then came back and was just felt entitled to everything and was pouty <laughs> and moody because she had moved on with her life yeah he's a contender for sure yeah. uh the only reason i didn't think to put him over axel senior or whatever his name is is because i really like his voice <laughs> that I can't do an impression of yet. Yeah. I really like his inimitable. You'll get it. You'll get it uh, one day. His inim inimitable twang. And you'll get yeah. cast in uh, all these Canadian flicks. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're like we no, need someone that can do a good so. Canadian accent. Oh, they're never going to hire me for that. <laughs> but okay. <laughs> all right. So those are your options. You can go with TJ Hanager. Uh, or you can go with old man Axel. I don't know. <laughs> we'll, we'll figure out the name. <laughs> For sure. And you can vote on Patreon, Instagram, and YouTube. Uh, I do want to welcome and thank a few new Patreon supporters. So give it up for Paul McKinley, Greg Pendergrast, D. Sykes uh, Blythewood, Samantha Mailman, Lucy and Christy Star Star. Now I can Welcome applaud, aboard. Applaud. Thank you. <laughs> I was doing silent applause the whole time I, for people so, who pe whoever was are watching listening. saw the the, the <laughs> silent the Nicole Kidman the bracelet clap. Yeah. The, <laughs> the seal hand clap. The, it does make your fingers look longer when you stretch yeah. your hands back like this. Like look at that. That's crazy. If you're watching. If you're not, my hands look crazy. Go well, on, Zach. if you are watching, you can also listen to these uh, episodes on podcast uh, platforms. The RSS feed link is in the descriptions down below. If you are listening to us, you can watch us on YouTube. The channel is The Cherry Picker. Subscribe. Oh.
we'd love to to have you as our subscribers here and uh, you can also find us on instagram our instagram handle is the cherry picker pod also, thank you to Andre Felix, our Yay! editor for the podcast, <laughs> uh, who puts all these videos together on YouTube. We're very appreciative of the work that he does. And yes. uh, I also wanted to say, uh, if you do want to support the podcast, uh, you can find uh, my Patreon account, Zach Cherry. And uh, any tier will get you all of these episodes much earlier than they air uh on the, the Tuesday that we release them. And if you are supporting on the Freddy Krueger tier, that will give you access to the bonus Patreon episode every month. Uh, last month we did Wild Things. And this month we are covering Buffy the Vampire Slayer season four. We are going to discuss and individually rank every episode uh -huh. uh, from that season. And so, argue. <laughs> there will be a lot of arguing. Those are and they go on for hours. The, I think the last yeah, one. Yeah, you like just can't get enough four. of us. Wait till you see us on Patreon. Wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, check out my Patreon there if you want to get more cherry picker uh, bonus material. <clears throat> Other than that, where can they find you on social media? Well, Zach Cherry, in addition to finding us at the Cherry Picker Pod on Instagram, you can find me at Edward is Truth One Word on Instagram and on YouTube. If you type in Edward is Truth all one word on YouTube, you'll find me reacting to shit. How about you, Zach Cherry? Oh God, don't do that ever again. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram is retro bitch face, all one word. I'm on YouTube, Zach Cherry, Z A C K C H E R R Y is my main channel. And Twitter, Twitter, if you want to see a lot of spicy Scream 6 commentary. <laughs> uh, Zach Cherry 8 is, is my handle there. Spicy. Uh, sometimes. But uh, what do we got going on next week? Is it the one with the. The, yes um, yeah cool so it's the darkness army of it is it dark, is darkness yeah. it's the army of dark or not vr it's army of darkness dark, directed darkness. by sam raimi there's the voice raimi yeah. <laughs> maybe it'll um, be back next week yeah yeah we're just uh, preparing for the release of evil dead rise which comes out in april so right. that will be next week but thank you for watching thank you for listening happy valentine's day and we will be right back